Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Whew. And check out the top right little eye. You'll find a nice uh, array of uh, playlists, all kinds of stuff. So check that out. Um, and in this video, we're going to do a bit of fun stuff. We're going to add a background to the world. And we are going to prep for a GUI as well. Um, might be a timer. We might use clock, all these things. So we're going to have a bunch of cool stuff in GUI. But I'm just going to go ahead and do a world uh, section here. I'm also going to check if I'm actually recording here. Yes. Good. So for the world background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a SF sprite. Now, some of you might want to do... Um, a rectangle shape and put it at the same size as the window but I'm not going to do that I want the sprite uh, version because I like to do that I have downloaded a nice little background as well look at this fly background real nice real beautiful so I just got that um, you can get that from the github or just download your own whatever screen size you want whatever size you want I'm, I'm doing it uh, or I got one that is the same size as my screen so um, yeah, that is to not have any edges. So we have that world background. Let's go ahead and do void in it world. Just like that. I'll keep I'll call it in it world. You can call it whatever you want. Once that is done, you want to go into that function in game.cpp in it world should be up top in it world and when we call in it world first of all we want to call it as well this sorry I'm fat fingering in it world whoops there we go uh, make sure you call it in this function in it world we're going to load this uh, world background load uh, there we go okay then we're going to add a world background texture as well sf texture background text i'm going to call it world background text you can call it whatever you want again as long as you know what it is this world background texture dot load from file and now we're going to load it from that file wherever you put it you want to go ahead and go to it so i'm going to go to it i know that my directory is up to here this is where my solution is so that means i'm going to go into the folder textures and background one.jpg so uh whoops textures background one.jpg and we're going to make a little error check for this so if this is not true exclamation mark we have an error stdc out error game could not load background texture just print out a little error for you here we're not doing the best kind of uh, error handling with throws and everything but this fine for now. At least it will tell you what the problem is. And then you want to go to your sprite and do a set texture and go ahead and do this world background texture. Good. I and mean, you don't have to do true here to reset the rectangle. If you're seeing issues, you might want to try that, but this should be fine for you. Once this is done, you want to go down, make sure you call it again. Don't forget that and you want to render this you want to render this go down to your render part here so we're rendering gui we're rendering all the enemies everything i want to make a little function for this called um, go to your h file instead go all the way down to your render void render world so anything that has to do with the world itself not the players not the gui just the backgrounds the foreground stuff all that so that is what you want to have in there control dot paste that go there go
go to your game.cpp, go to the function itself, and in here, do a this window dot render, no, draw this world background and close that. And where do we render this? Remember, you want to have it in the background, so it should be the first thing you do. Draw um, world stuff. Now, there might be some foreground stuff, so you might want to call this render world background. But for now, we'll change that when that time comes. But for now, this is fine. This render world. Good. Very good. Run this. And hopefully you should see your background. Now keep a track. Keep an eye out. Let me see if I'm recording properly. Yes. Keep an eye out on this thingamajangy. Uh, let's see if this runs even on the console window, because here you'll see if there's an error with the background, but there was no error. We can see that we have our background here. It's not as really as scaled as you might want it, but it is what it is. All right, it is what it is. Now we need to do something before we do anything with the GUI. What we have to do is to prep for the player's collision. Now the player is moving outside of, of the screen and all that stuff. So make sure you go to your player.h and make sure you have this get bounce function because we're going to use this. We're going to go to game.h, game.h, update enemies, update bullets, update enemies, all that. Uh, we want to do a void, void, update. We might do update world as well while we're here. Void update collision two functions that we created. This one we can kind of keep on the low update world. Go ahead and define it, but don't really do anything there. Update collision is what we're going to do. All right. This is where the swag happens. This is where all the beautiful stuff happens. All right. So check this out. Go to your, that function you created. Uh, update enemy, sorry, update world and update collision. Go ahead and go into update collision. Now we're going to make sure we get the bounds of the player and the window, and we'll see, make sure the player can't move outside. Wherever we're moving the player, here, this is where we have to limit all that stuff as well. But what we can do in a beautiful way is we can check if this player get bounds. So let's do the left side first. Get bounds dot left is less than zero dot F. So if we're outside of the screen, remember 0.f is the coordinate to the most left part of the screen. And if we're outside of that, we don't want that to happen. So then we're going to snap the player back. This player, now we'll see if we have everything that we need. We don't have a set position. So go to your player.h, make sure you have a section for modifiers, because this is going to modify our position, void set position const sf vector 2f okay you can have it like this or you can have a f usually i like to do it like this so i'm going to keep that if you wanted that i'm going to do a void set position const float x const float y keep it like that define both of these they're overloaded okay and go to your player.cpp now, and you'll see both your functions. And I'm going to use this to do a set position, sprite.setPosition, x and y. And the same thing on the one above. So now it matters, doesn't really matter, but you can pick and choose which one you want to use. All right. You have both of these functions ready for you. Uh, now go to your game.cpp after you save all that. Now do the set position you just created to 0.f this player get bounds dot left. No, uh, top, because we're going to keep the top. No matter what happens, we're going to keep the y coordinate because this is only regarding the x coordinate. So that's why we're only setting the x coordinate to zero to make sure the player snaps back to that position. 
I shouldn't have run this because I have to do one more thing. Close that down. We have to call this. So go to your update. And remember, keep keep an eye out where you're doing your input. You're doing your input here. You're updating your player here. You probably want to do it right here. So this update collision like that. And then you probably want to update your world as well here somewhere. Uh, I'd probably do it somewhere around uh, somewhere on the bottom. I don't know. We'll, we'll just call it now so we don't forget world. And now we're going to check the left side. In the next video, hopefully we can do the rest of the sides. That will be a little thing for you to do at home by yourself. Try to get all the other sides to collide. And I'll show you the answer in the next one. But if you try to go out more left, you won't be able to. Uh, your player is stuck here. So, yeah. You're not moving anywhere. You're not going anywhere to the left at least. In the next one, like I said, we're going to keep working on that function. Make sure we do everything. Just make sure you do this. Uh, left world collision. And then, yeah, once that's done, you won't be able to move out of the screen. And that'll be perfect. Then we'll move on to the GUI and all the finalizing beautiful stuff. Hopefully we'll be done by the game in no time. Or with the game in no time. Let me see. Okay, good timing. Thanks, guys and girls. Thanks for sticking with me for so long. Thanks for watching these videos. Please check out the description box. Drop a like, subscribe. Also check out the top right eye for all the nice content. And I'll see you in the next one, right? Bye-bye.